Today's session, we are going to discuss about dysphagia and stroke. Dysphagia is difficulty in swallowing. That's one of the common symptoms which we can see in stroke patients. Before we start the dysphagia, we have to know about what is normal swallowing. So here, today's session, we will discuss about normal swallowing. Welcome back to Alice GJ. And I am an RN and a healthcare educator here to empower you with the life-saving skills and practical nursing advice. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell to get updated on our latest tips. Okay, now we will discuss what happens in normal swallowing. Normal swallowing has four phases. Here you can see the first phase is oral preparatory phase. The name itself, it is preparatory here. Okay, once the food enters into the mouth, the food is chewed, automatically it is. It started chewing the, and it is mixed with the saliva. That's in the preparatory phase. So same time what happens, the muscles which is present in the tongue, lips and the cheeks started to contract and make the food into a bolus. You can see over here. So that's a preparatory phase. So it's getting pre prepared for swallowing. So that's the preparatory phase. After the preparatory phase, uh, the second phase starts. So that's called the oral phase. In the oral phase, what happens? The tongue is pushes the tongue pushes the food bolus at the back of the throat. So now it's getting ready for swallowing. So the oral phase, the tongue propels the food backward of the throat. That's a transit phase. It's also a transit phase and it's a voluntary phase that begins with the posterior propulsion of the bolus by the tongue. Same thing what I explained earlier and ends with the initiation of the pharyngeal swallow. So once the oral phase, the food is ready to swallow. So before swallowing, the phase is oral phase. Once the oral phase is completed, it starts with the swallowing process. That phase is called the third phase, that's the pharyngeal phase. So, in the pharyngeal phase, what is happening? The swallowing reflex is triggered over here. That, that With that triggering of the reflex, the swallowing reflex, the bolus reaches the back of the throat. That's called oropharynx. After that, what happens? The same time when the swallowing reflex is uh, triggered and uh, pushes the uh, and the bolus feed reaches over here, same time it elevates the larynx and closes the oral, closes the nasal passage. So here comes there are two passages. One is for the airway and other is for the esophagus and into the stomach. So when the food comes over here, automatically with the triggering of the swallowing reflex, the soft palate lifts up and closes the nasal cavity along with the voice, vo uh, our voice box, so that's a larynx. So what happens? The food will not enter into the nasal passages. So that is with the help of the soft palate and our voice box. Box. So that's our larynx. Then what happens? The pharyngeal constrictor muscles contracted sequentially and pushes the food into the esophagus. So all the times the contraction of the muscles each phase pushes the food down. Here in the pharyngeal phase, the pharyngeal constrictor muscle helps and pushes the food into the esophagus. Here the total duration it is one second. Hope you understood about the pharyngeal phase. Now comes the fourth phase. So now with the pharyngeal constricted muscle, the food enters into the esophagus. The entry of the esophagus, there is an esophageal sphincter muscle. The bolus, uh, the bolus feed enters into the esophagus enters into the esophagus through the upper esophageal sphincter. That's a muscle ring over here. Then the esophagus uses the, then here the peristalsis. Again, the contraction will happen over here. It's called a peristalsis, peristaltic movement. The bolus foot 
move downward to the stomach so that is what happening in the esophagus so from the backward of the throat the food enters into the esophagus and from the esophagus uh, from the esophageal upper esophageal sphincter the foot pushes down with the help of the rhythmic contractions of the muscles over here that is called peristalsis and the foot pushes down into the stomach that's what is happening in the esophageal phase then from the lower esophageal the, from the upper esophageal sphincter the foot pushes down and from the lower esophageal sphincter the bolus passes through the lower esophageal sphincter and it enter into the stomach this is what happens in the normal swallowing the duration of this phase is typically last about 3 to 5 seconds we will just revise there are four stages in normal swallowing the first phase is oral preparatory phase in the oral preparatory phase what is happening the food mixes with the saliva we started chewing it and with the help of the muscles of the lips tongue and what we what is happening is that the food it makes us a bolus and in the second phase the oral phase the tongue pushes the food backward into the throat the back of the throat from there the third phase start uh, happening that is swallowing phase that is the pharyngeal phase here it's ready to swallow so the swallowing reflex is triggered over here with that what is happening the larynx and the vocal the soft palate and the larynx the larynx is the voice box with the help the help of these two it elevates and closes the nasal passage the food will not enter into the nasal cavity that is our airway to the lungs so uh, that closes and the food pushes into the esophagus through the upper esophageal sphincter and with the peristaltic movement it pushes down and it enters into the stomach through the lower esophageal sphincter so this is the normal swallowing and in the next session we will discuss about dysphagia that is difficulty in swallowing that is one of the common symptom which is occurring in stroke patients so in that session we will see that how we can handle or how we can take care of dysphagia in stroke patients if we did not take care properly the dysphagia in stroke patient there is a common symptom which is occurring common problem common problem which is happening in this such type of patients are aspiration that means the food aspirated into the lungs so as we discussed we have two passages one is nasal passage and the food cavity so if we did not take care properly the there is a chance of aspiration due to that different complications can occur for the patient that we will discuss in next sessions thank you for watching i'll see you today